Welcome into K State Online. I'm Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway. K State opens up the basketball season officially on Monday night with an 82 to 69 loss to a top 25 team in the USC Trojans. It was going to be a tall task for K State going into the game. The Wildcats knew they were going to be without Naquan Tomlin, who figured to be, if not their best player this season, one of their more impactful ones and a guy that you're really counting on to do really a lot of things for you offensively and defensively. Still no timetable on when he might return. I think the hope would be that, you know, if, if everything plays out um, in an ideal manner, maybe he's back by, you know, December at some point. But there's just really no way to know right now until everything continues to play out with the legal process there. And then Quez Glover gets hurt in the game against Emporia State. And uh, it was, you know, reported earlier today that it's, that's like a six to eight week injury he's dealing with right now. And what that led to then is K-State facing a USC team that has one of the better players in the country in Boogie Ellis. And then in addition to that, he now has a player as his running mate and Isaiah Collier, who was the number one recruit in the class of 2023. And both of those guys had really, really good nights. The, the two of them combined for 42 points against K-State. Uh, it was just a, a strong performance all around. And then uh, there was also the toss in 16 points uh, from Kobe Johnson in the game from USC. So they had three guys hit at least 16 points in the game. And offensively, they were able to get a lot done after K-State really scrambled and fought pretty hard in the first half. Seemed like there was good energy and effort. Shots just didn't fall for K-State, which I think might be a continuing theme throughout the season. So uh, a little bit to get into there, but Drew, just uh, give your your immediate takeaways from uh, the loss to start the season for Jerome Tang and the gang. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the biggest takeaway right off the bat is just Isaiah Collier and Boogie Ellis were the two best players on the floor tonight. I mean, in the first half, those two combined for 28 points for USC, and K State had 30 total. And it seemed like when one wasn't on the floor, or if they were both on the floor, one could just take over the game. And K State really kind of struggled to find a stop. I mean, there was one point where K State went to a 1 3 1 zone in the second half, and somehow Boogie Ellis found himself wide open. And that, that's just something that can't happen, especially with the, your margin of error being a lot thinner now. So, I mean, it's just – USC is a really, really good team. And I, I think you, we learned a lot about USC, but I think we saw – and we talked about it before we started recording – that we saw a, some flashes from K-State too. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and like, I, I just look at it for K-State in, in this sense – um, because I was talking with some guys, you know, during the game and kind of going over it. And look, they USC was missing two guys that are going to make them a better basketball team when they get back onto the floor. Um, obviously, Bronny James was the headliner in that situation uh, for USC, but they also have Vince the Prince uh, because I can't say his last name, so I'll just go with the nickname there. Uh, Alec Bussey would be very proud of me. R.I.P. Um, both. <laughs> Vince and Alex still alive, but like they will help USC be better. The two guys K State is missing though are more impactful to what K State could and would do because obviously Naquan Tomlin is a guy that you would profile as possibly being your best player if all things worked out the way you wanted them to. And then with Quest Glover. I think Quez Glover's probably going to be a pretty nice piece. I mean, he seems like he could fit into that Desi Sills role pretty well, but it's not like he's, you know, some world beater. Like, Bronny James is a better basketball player than Quez Glover oh, is. Yes. But for what Quez Glover is to K-State, it's probably more impactful than what Bronny James is to USC right now, including the fact that you get Quez Glover out there. That is a guy that, you know, the, the level can be debated, but – he has played plenty of college basketball games before. The alternative for K-State on Monday night was they had to play probably way more Dorian Finister than I would have ever anticipated playing in a game against high major talent. And they also had to use all three freshmen tonight. Now, look, the position-to-position -position stuff isn't necessarily right on line with each other, but it is indicative of everything. And while I think that there were some things to like from 
uh, you know, the, the minutes that RJ Jones and day to Ames gave offensively, they're not ready to contribute for case or at least they weren't on Monday night. And this is always the biggest thing with injuries in any sport. Most of the time, it's a lot less about the guy that you're losing and a lot more about the guys that have to step up behind them. And I think we saw that tonight with the quest Glover situation. It's going to be something to monitor and really, this is a tough non-conference schedule for K-State to have to navigate this year already, even if they were at full strength. Now you throw in the circumstances of the roster, and tonight highlights that it's going to be a grind for K-State to survive this non-conference slate. Oh, yeah. There, there were some bright spots for all three, I think, of Dorian Finister, R.J. Jones, and Dade Ames. But, I mean, I, I was texting some people during the game, too, and I said, but freshmen are still freshmen. Like you, yep. you still saw that the game was a little too fast for them at times, or that they'd have a wide open shot and just rush it. And there was one, there was I think a stretch where Casey was starting to play better in the second half and were making shots, and I think the game was down to a nine point game at that point. And R.J. Jones shot a three that was probably ill advised, and then <laughs> J.J. Ames comes down and does the yeah, same. Uh... Thing. RJ had an air ball that was like he was still in motion towards yeah. the, the line. Yeah, it was not it was not good. Yeah, like you have those two ill-advised shots by the freshman. And I mean that that's just gonna happen, but that happens in this game, and then you look up and it goes from a nine point game to a twelve or a thirteen or a fourteen point game. It's like it's going to get better. And I mean it's gonna be one thing that I write about for like a what we learn standpoint is that K State's not a finished product. Like they're they're mm -hmm. not even close. Yep. Their their best basketball is in front of them. So it was it was fun. And like I said this like to no shade to like KU and how they scheduled because they have the Champions Classic coming up. But I would rather see like where you're at opening night against the USC than against North Carolina Central. Yeah. You learn more about what you're you you can be. You and honestly for K State it may be a good thing with, you know, if you're, if you're trying to figure out how to sort the games around and everything and say, Hey, you play this same schedule, but you can shift the, some of the games around. It is probably better to open up in a game where you have to be ready. You're going to find a lot out about yourselves. And as opposed to, you know, uh, Bellerman is, is on Friday night in Manhattan. If the games had been flipped and you start against Bellerman Bellerman, I know a lot of people remember, you know, they've upset Louisville their first year, bumped up into the A-Sun. They won the conference, but they couldn't go to the NCAA tournament because all this. Bellerman was not a good team last year. They're probably not going to be a good team this year. But if K-State plays them tonight, you learn nothing about them, and you just kind of go in blind again, and then it's like, oh, they lost. To I think it's better to have done what happened tonight. K-State was tested, and honestly, like, I've gone through stretches since we knew what this roster was going to look like where I was, eh, you know, this team maybe is looking like sixth, seventh in the Big 12 type material this year. And then I started to think about it more. It's like, man, I really like some of the pieces, though, and uh, some of these other teams in the league. Like, uh, there's no reason why K-State can't finish, you know, top four in the Big 12. But then with everything else that's gone on, I was back down. And honestly, I was, I was really low on K-State going into tonight. I tried to make that clear and try to give the reasoning behind it in the, the preview video that, that D.Y. and I did earlier today. But after the game against USC, I mean, K-State was down 10 at halftime. They were down by, I, mean, I don't know if it got exactly to 20, but they were down by close to that yeah, at one 19. point. Uh, let's see, the largest lead for USC was 19. Yeah, 19. It was six and a half minutes play. With all that going on and with the poor shooting and some of the other performances that were out there, I come out of this game against USC feeling a lot better about the rest of the season for K-State than I thought I would have. I saw some flashes from a lot of different guys. Honestly, Will McNair, his action, that is that is more offensive competency than I expected to get from him in any game this year, and he did that against USC. So I'll be interested to see uh, if, you know, if that was just an apparition or if we see something similar to that down the road. And then – I mean, David Gasson, I thought the aggressiveness was up there. He played tougher tonight. Still some moments that are a struggle, but there there is a better version of David Gasson this season. The rebounding was a big positive. Now, K-State missed a lot of shots, so they gave themselves chances for a lot of rebounds. But 
K-State missed 49 shots in the game against USC. USC only missed 29. K-State still out-rebounded the Trojans 44-41. to That's pretty impressive, and that's something that has not happened in a long time at K-State where you felt like, oh, man, they were the better rebounding team. Arthur Kaluma didn't have a good night offensively. He came out of the gates aggressive, looking to make some things happen, went to the free throw line, but from the field, it just wasn't there. But the rebounding came through. Uh, he ends up with nine rebounds. Gasson has a double-double. He has 10 boards. And then Perry had six rebounds as a guard. So I, I think that there are some things to like to take away from this. And I know that a lot of people will probably want to just burn it down because it looked very ugly at times. But I would implore you not to. And I, that's not me even saying that I think this K-State team is going to be anywhere near the form of what people thought they might be compared to last year's team. Um, because like there's still a realm where K-State plays better, they get better as the season goes on, but with everything else that's happening with them and the roster construction right now, it's a chance this team plays in the NIT. But I feel better about this team moving forward, and like you said, they're not a finished product. There is a lot more room for growth. Now it has to come pretty quick because after these next two games um, against you know schools from the, from Ace, the A-Sun and the Summit League, you are off to the Bahamas and you're going to play Providence, who you know is still a, a decent team despite losing you know Ed Cooley to Georgetown. But Kim English is a competent coach. He comes in there, and then you're probably either getting Nigel Pack or Georgia. So I think that the way that this is going for K State, I mean, it's a quick turnaround. You got to get fixed quick. But my confidence level is higher, and I've got more optimism than I anticipated after tonight because I thought they'd get beat. In similar fashion to this, um, I was hoping that the offense would look a little cleaner at times, but it's a team that hasn't played together. They're going to feel their way through it. Last year's team benefited from playing a pretty soft non-conference schedule. This year's team doesn't have that benefit. Uh, and last year's team, it wasn't. It was not until the second game of Big 12 play that you felt like they were a team that was a no doubt about it NCAA tournament team ready to go type of deal. I mean. The yeah. first however many games in that West Virginia game to open conference play, you're like, this team doesn't have it. And then, boom, it clicked. It fell in. Just last year's team, their non-con Pac-12 game was against Cal. And in their their tournament, they played LSU, who was terrible last year. They played Nevada, who was probably the best team that they would face in that tournament. They were a mid-major, though, and Nevada kind of faltered down the stretch. Like, they were not tested as much in the non-con. Butler, the Big East opponent. Butler was terrible last year, and they lost that game. This year's team's a little bit different, but... Next there, Monday night will be... Yeah. There was good fight here, and, and so that's that's what I'm trying to say. A lot of words, a lot of time taken off the clock there for you, Drew, but that's what I'm trying to convey. Because, I look, I think you know me well enough that I'm not a sunshine pumper. No. I am... I, I'm down. not... I'm not normally very optimistic about things and I will tell it how it is. I, I would much rather be that way. And trust me, I mean, I, there are people watching and listening to this that have been alive way longer than me. There are people that wa watch and listen to this, that they have been graduated from K-State longer than I've been alive, but I'm 25 years old. My parents went to K-State. I grew up a K-Stater, went to K-State. Like I've been around this long enough to know when I should be really negative about things. I don't feel that way right now. Some of the situations are pretty negative with K-State basketball at this point in time, but I think people should remain optimistic about this team moving forward. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd be willing to venture that Arthur Kaluma probably doesn't go 1 of 11 from the floor again. Because, I, I mean, he it's not like he was getting bad shots. He was taking good shots, and yeah. it, it wasn't falling for him. And, like, Cam Carter, you can still see that he's getting closer to potentially taking off Tyler Perry couldn't miss near the end of the game. Um, and then, I mean, you talk about like things that you kind of saw that were glimpses and flashes. I I'd be willing to debate that. I think that this team might be more athletic than even last year's team because that it, it just, you could see it and they're rebounding better They're They looked more cohesive. They were just, Times that they weren't very consistent. There was a couple times in the second half where it looked like they weren't sure if they were in man or zone, which led to easy baskets. And then at and then you're just gonna have these mistakes early on, especially when you're playing 
8 a.m. played 15 minutes. Dorian Finister played 12 minutes. RJ yeah. Jones played 11 minutes. None of those guys were high minute players in college a year ago because Dorian Finister redshirted and the other two were in high school. I mean, you're, you're going to have those issues at times this year. And it, it's like people have talked about on the board uh, when the Quez Glover news came out that K State could get better because of that in the long run, because you probably know what you're getting with, Qu- with Quez Glover. Mm-hmm. You're not sure what you're going to get with Dade Ans, RJ Jones, or Dorian Finister just yet, because they're so young, and this experience will be really beneficial come Big 12 play. Well, and, you know, looking at Tyler Perry's night, here's, honestly, I, I you look at the final box score, and it's, it's fairly similar to some games that Marquise Noel had last year, where, okay, yeah, you, 22 points, but 5 of 17 shooting, and I know people were worried. I was one of them. I Look, I, I love Tyler Perry at North Texas. I For the last two years, I was like, this guy needs to get in the portal and go to K-State, and it finally happened. And now that was when I was not you know, covering K-State full-time. I was working at radio down here. I was just like, hey, I love what this guy's doing at Wichita State. Can he go to K-State? Um, but he, he's 5 of 17 from the field. He ends up 4 of 12 from 3. That He, he was basically average. He was 33% from 3. Um, you'll have games like that, but six boards, six assists, only one turnover. And if you look at it, he hits that three at the buzzer to end the first half. The second half, I think that's a lot more along the lines of the Tyler Perry we're going to get. He was four of eight from the field. He was three of five from three and knocked down all of his free throws, two boards, four assists. I think that's the Tyler Perry that we'll get. And I think it just takes some settling in. Oh it's yeah, new role. All this. The one thing that I hope that doesn't happen for him is that, like, just focus on being Tyler Perry and playing like Tyler Perry. Don't think I'm coming to K State and Marquise Noel is gone. I need to try and play like Marquise Noel. No, play like Tyler Perry and let everything come to you. Uh, don't try and force it because there were moments in that first half where I started to think he might get the mindset that okay, well, this small guard did it and they need somebody to do it. I, I can do this. I can have that responsibility. It's like, you're not quite Marquise Noel. Um, so I, I thought ultimately slow start, but a positive and step in the right direction for the Tyler Perry stuff with K-State. I think the the impressive thing with Tyler Perry is that he's one where you can tell that he's a pure shooter because every time that he shoots it, it looks like he has a chance of going in. Yes, even the ones that brick tonight. I'm with you. I thought I was like, you know, and I... He, it's it's the kind of guy that the shot was not falling, but I was okay every time he kept shooting because most of them were in the flow of the offense. They looked like the right shot, and I was not concerned about him continuing to shoot and it being bad for K-State because, I mean, the alternative is you want Dorian Finister taking those shots? I would rather have Tyler Perry taking those shots. So I thought that was good. Uh, and look, it, it's a 13-point loss. They were down by 19. Could have been worse. Um, it also could have been better. I mean, it's shooting 24% from three. While I don't think this K-State team is going to be an electric three-point shooting team, I don't think they're going to shoot 24% in every game this year, and I don't think they're going to miss 49 shots uh, in a lot of games this season. So it's just tough. You t- played a team that had two dynamic guards on the floor that had stretches where they were unstoppable, and this is an adjustment for everybody with K-State. The, the guys that were here last year and the coaching staff, basically every game K-State played in last year, they had the two best individual players on the floor. Tonight, they did not. And there's a good chance that for most of the games they play against Power 6 competition this year, that will not be the case. Um, and, and even in the games last year where maybe they didn't have the 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 top two individuals, they had at least one of them. And you could say, okay, they have at least the best duo on the floor. There are going to be situations in a lot of circumstances this year where that is not the case again. So I think this is going to, to show us another side of Jerome Tang as a head coach and how things kind of work out and then how these players find a way to step up. But um, it's, it's weird for me to be in this position because I felt like I was being more positive than usual after K-State lost that game to Texas on Saturday in football. And I find myself in the same position here after basketball. And that's not normally who I am. Like, I am ready to burn it down with the rest of you. I, That's fun to do. That It feels like the right thing to do most of the time. But yeah, in this circumstance, I found myself feeling much better. 
you, you just have a kid and you get soft. That That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Hey, these these guys are just kids out there. I look out on the floor and I just see a bunch of kids, and I I, I don't have the heart to tell them, you know, come on, do, do better or whatever. No, that's that's not true at all. I I say things to my daughter that you know she's about to turn three months old, and my wife will look at me and she's like, well, like what are you saying to her? Like that she's that's not going to help. That's not going to do anything. She can't register that. Like I don't know. She the, sometimes the way she drinks the bottle infuriates me. So I'm just like, come on. You can do better than that. I'm going to, I'm going to stop. It doesn't help. She doesn't know what she's doing, but I at least can coach her up right now and, and act like I'm doing better. So I'm still just as hard on everybody as, as I once was, but I can see, I can see where things are going. And, um, I'm at least intrigued and optimistic about the rest of this K-State basketball season. I feel better about it than I did a week ago when I, I was shooting off texts to people. And I said, I do not like the situation right now. I mean, Looking around, some guys are struggling. The Naquan Tomlin stuff is going down. It just feels, and some of the things that Jerome Tang had said publicly about, you know, still looking for a leader, all this other stuff is like, man, I don't really like this. But um, tonight, it's a loss. It sucks. It's not a good thing, but I think we can look and find some good in it. And if everybody will just, you know, kind of have their cooler heads prevail in all of this. Uh, you'll be ready for the the Bellarmine game on Friday. And as long as K-State takes care of business in the next two, then it'll be really optimistic and fun for the uh, tournament just before Thanksgiving out in the Bahamas because that's going to give K-State another chance to, to be tested. You face a Providence team that was in the NCAA tournament a season ago, and then you're going to get, if you win in all likelihood, uh, the the Nigel Pack revenge game, even though nobody on this roster was here two years ago with Nigel Pack. Um, it will still be a, a good test against the Miami team that went to the Final Four. They're top 15 in the country right now. So that'll be a, a fun thing to, to monitor and watch.